Well, hello everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, IBT Partners webinar series on growing your exports and international business. We thank you for joining us. Um, we're very pleased to welcome you from all across the, let me see, we have invitees and registered participants from, from Europe, that's Germany, France, UK, um, the United States, I can see from New York to California. Welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us on growing your exports and international business, special focus, trade shows, and international marketing platforms. Um, we're going to dive straight into it, but before we do a moment or two on some housekeeping, uh, we have a really great program prepared for you today with lots of information. There will be some polls, there'll be four polls, and a questionnaire, eight questions at the end. Our objective is to provide you with some really useful takeaways to help you grow your exports and international business. First of all, a little bit of housekeeping. Do know that this is one in a series of webinars. Um, you can go to www.ibtpartners backslash resources webinars, and you can find the complete list of webinars going forward. On diving into this webinar, this webinar will be approximately 30 minutes. Um, there's going to be a brief introduction, that'll be by myself, and then I will hand over to our host, that is Susanna Hardy, you can see a picture of Susanna there on the left, uh, who will introduce the table of contents, and today's expert guest speaker, we're very pleased and proud to welcome Dennis, Dennis Smith, the president of Messe Frankfurt, USA, and um, then um, we will be handing over to Dennis and then going through some of the polls there. We do ask you to participate, so please, when you see the polls come through, we would love to have your opinion. Do let us know what you think. There will then, at the very end, be some questions and um, answers. You can see on your desktop there to the left, questions. Don't hesitate to send and submit us your questions. We will attempt to answer all of the questions today. If we don't, do know that we will get back to you. Um, with their questions also, we have a moderator with us today who will be looking at those questions to help us answer them. So, and as I said, at the end, there'll be an eight question survey. Um, so please give us some feedback. At the end, let us know what you think of the webinar. And do know that there will be a copy of the recording and the slide deck that will be made available to you by Friday. So look out for that on Friday. So let's get started. I take this opportunity to introduce IBD Partners and Susanna Hardy and then uh, Dennis Smith from Messe Frankfurt USA. Two words on IBT Partners. IBT is a private company. We are a firm of business developers with offices in the UK, Germany, France, and the US. IBT has been in business successfully providing online services for over 15 years now. IBT's core activity is helping companies grow their exports and business internationally, and we do that by building international localized websites and then all of that exciting online marketing stuff that gets companies to communicate with their local target markets. Um, this sits so well along today's keynote subject, which is trade shows, trade shows in international markets and website marketing in international markets. They sit side by side. And now on to Susanna. Uh, Susanna is Marketing Director for IBT Partners in Europe. Um, Susanna has worked and lived both in the US and in Europe and has over 20 years of experience helping companies grow internationally. A word on Dennis. Um, Dennis began his trade show career living and working in Europe for over 18 years and has been responsible for more than 250 international events across more than 30 countries. Uh, covering a multitude of industries, uh, so that includes automotive, uh, to manufacturing and IT, food and textiles. Uh, Dennis has an MBA in international business and really um, has more experience than anybody that I've ever met in terms of trade shows. I met Dennis at a trade show a long time ago and we were discussing social media for trade fairs. Um, and I think that you will understand, um, certainly by the end of this webinar, of his deep knowledge and understanding in regard to trade shows. Um, Dennis at Messe Frankfurt, a word on Messe Frankfurt, um, one of the world's leading trade show organizers, um, over 120 trade fairs per annum in 40 different locations, um, a very impressive organization and we're proud to be presenting today's webinar with Messe Frankfurt on trade fairs. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Susanna and I thank you very much indeed. Susanna. Thank you very much, John, and welcome uh, to our exporters. Getting right down to business, we have a very um, uh, packed day, a packed seminar here. 
Um, here's a little, you know, sort of uh, agenda list of what we're going to be covering. Um, and as John pointed out, just sit back, relax, listen, learn. Uh, we, you will be getting copies of the slide deck, so you don't even have to take notes. Um, uh, you know, really just uh, just focus in on, on on getting some of the information. I'm going to give a very brief into um, overview of some of the of the uses of of international websites, of localized websites, and then passing straight on to Dennis. So without further ado, um, I guess this slide here just tries to sum up for us what a localized website can do for companies and for exporters. Uh, they really uh, allow an exporting company to reach into uh, their target markets and, um, and organize their sales and organize their, their whole um, um, a sales structure and optimize website, uh, uh, trade shows. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today as well, optimizing your, your trade show experience. And those are big investments, so um, uh, you make sure that you they really get the, the most out of it possible. Um, Susanna, I know, John, Susanna yes? could I just jump in? I would like immediately to get going with polls. Um, this could be a great time, so please, everybody, are you ready? I'm going to be launching today's poll number one. There we go, I'm launching it, which is, do you already have localized websites for your international markets? So please uh, start polling yes. Um, we're 33%, 40% yes, 57% no. Um, so it looks as though it's stabling out at about 40% yes and 60% no. Thank you very much. We will be sharing that information with you at the end. Thank you very much indeed. That's very interesting. Uh, so the majority don't actually have localized websites, and um, that's perhaps something you want to be thinking about a bit. Um, but for those that, that do, we hope that you're using them efficiently for um, uh, for your websites, for for your trade shows. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, I think one of the key things that we had really in terms of um, uh, trade shows was really just the preparation. Um, you know, and, and using your website just to broadcast your presence at that trade show. A primary goal of any trade show is generating direct leads, and so for us, really the best tool possible is your website, uh, particularly with trade shows, since you don't have on-ground, on-the-ground support teams to back you up. So you're really relying on the virtual world and the the, digital, the online world that gets really its full value in terms of uh, for, for for trade shows. So the, the couple of things that we've found work really well um, is, first of all, prepare well in advance. And by advance, we typically work with clients about three months in advance of their, um, of their uh, trade show presence um, to make sure that they're fully you know, leveraging and, and getting social media out there uh, and advertising their presence. And then another really good tip is if you have a trade show, let's say you're going to one of the Messe Frankfurt, you know, iconic, you know, trade shows that they host um, on a regular basis, on an annual basis, then really make it a permanent feature of your website. Uh, we found that's really a great way to establish your presence and, and, and own that space. It makes you sort of almost like a recognized expert in that trade show um, uh, within your community. So. Um, we've, we've often divide like little spaces on a co corporate website just to make sure that they have a, this um, ongoing presence with the, with, the, uh, with the trade show. So some of our top tips in terms of uh, uh, trade show optimization here, really it only comes down to social media and um, using your localized website and social media. Um, you know, I, I don't know if any of you have been on these trade shows uh, where sometimes, you know, there's, there's, there's poor, there's so many people on their telephone that you can't even get a telephone line sometimes. And the only thing I can get through is your social media, your, your hashtags uh, through, for Twitter, um, your LinkedIn, your, 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 even your Facebook uh, start to get really important. Um, uh, and we use a lot of that social media world to broadcast presence before the trade show, during the trade show, and after the trade show. So here are a couple of our top tips that I've said, uh, obviously with social media, but also um, uh, make sure that contact details are really easy to find. 
and are uh, easy to find on a mobile enabled way. So we would really also recommend, and I'll get back to this later, about QR and how to how to get better barcodes on your on your um, on all your media. Um, one little tip as well is to make sure that your trade show involvement is really well known within your company, even within your company, let alone to the outside world, especially international trade shows. It's um, surprising to us. It's a great way also of making international teams work more with their domestic partners and their domestic colleagues. And suddenly you find that there could be some good switchovers and, and um, synergies there. So that's also one a little tip as well. Um, finally, just a few more little things. Connecting with prospects during during the show, indeed, as I mentioned, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Remember that uh, a lot of countries, for example, Europe, uses social media even more than American companies, and they use them in different ways. Uh, but in terms of trade shows, they're really a fantastic way of getting media, getting content, and getting your social your your ranking for your website increased. So as I mentioned as well. Well, make sure that your handouts are all web friendly. Uh, if you, you know, if you get a QR code on it, there's a lot of applications you can get for, you know, Microsoft has one. That's Kway that has one, uh, just to give you QR codes. Uh, using hashtags uh, for for to 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 encourage retweeting is a great way of 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 increasing and and um, um, you know really really getting your messages out. Um, all calls to action and all all media these days have got to be mobile enabled, and that's especially true of any trade fair uh, trade fair um, um, uh, handouts and marketing material. And then we we really encourage people to watch their social media during the event, not only on their localized website but also on your domestic core website. It's a great way of you know seeing that a prospect you met you know one day is actually looking at your home site that evening. And then you can reach out to that prospect again and say, "Hey, we've got any more questions," uh, and uh, and reconnect with the with that prospect during the trade show again. And with that, I'm really going to turn over to Dennis, if uh, if you like, and and he can talk talk a bit about Messe Frankfurt and the the global uh, uh, trade fair world. Um, Dennis. Okay. Well, thank you, Susanna and John. Thank you for the introduction. I almost feel like you you handed me a doctorate. In exhibitions, but um, I want to I want to let everyone know that it's it's really a pleasure to be here speaking to such a diverse group of companies that are interested in learning more about international trade shows and everything that 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 we are doing as a as a company, and I think the industry as a whole is doing to help more U.S. companies uh, prepare for international trade shows. And, and we just we just are committed to the success of, of increasing U.S. exports. So with that, I'd like to just get going. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to provide a little bit of a macro status on the international trade show and exhibition industry, and then run through some, some areas of focus that, that, that we try to work with our clients on that gives you just a little bit more insight into what it means to really prepare for a trade show uh, from an operations perspective and from a, from a marketing perspective. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions and we're going to do some polls during the, during the discussion, but, uh, but I'd like to uh, field as many questions as possible at the end. Um, so, so when we look at the, at the international trade show industry, um, we, we, we know that there's somewhere between 30 and 35,000 exhibitions annually around the world. This, this represents about 124 million square meters of space occupied and approximately 4.4 million exhibitors are participating to trade shows around the world. And they welcome 260 million visitors, so 260 million buyers. Now, not all of us are going to exhibit, travel, or visit all of the trade shows around the world, but um, based upon numbers, the trade show industry is, is typically growing together with the global GDP, uh, sometimes ahead of it, sometimes below it. But, you know, uh, trade shows are important. They're important for, for, for business. They're important for cultural exchange, um, 
and 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 we don't see trade shows going anywhere anytime soon. Now, when we when we look at the first slide, you're going to see some numbers about uh, trade shows in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. And I do apologize; we're not trying to focus on these key areas, but um, just to give you some in, insight to this to this chart, where you can see that that uh, number of exhibitions in the United States far exceeds any other regions in the world, and uh, the region of Central and South America is not shown on this on this slide, but it's about the same size as Asia Pacific, with around 1,800, 1,900 annual exhibitions. Africa and the Middle East are are at a much lower level, uh, somewhere ranging between 500 and, and 800 exhibitions. But the key thing with this slide is is that you're seeing that that uh, Europe has has maybe a third of the number of exhibitions in in, in uh, uh, of, of the United States, uh, but the average size of the events in Europe are so much larger. So you can see 5,300 square meters average size of a show in the United States, um, and compared to almost 20,000 square meters as an average size of a show in Europe. Uh, I'm going to go into more more detail in terms of what that means in terms of a, of a U.S. company exhibiting in a show in Europe. Um, but but, but it, it, what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to, to give everyone an idea of the scale of shows. And one, one footnote is that China is becoming very, very comparable to Europe in terms of the size of the shows and also in the, in the size of the number of visitors that attend the shows. So you can see lower uh, on that page where the U.S. average is right around 7,500 visitors or attendees. The, the shows in Europe and together with China, and China's trending higher than that. We just don't have the data in this, in this, uh, in this report, which was filed by, by UFI, which is the Union of, of, of Exhibitions International. So you can see that the, the, the number of visitors are higher to, to the European shows versus the U.S. On the, on the next slide, we can, we can dive down into, well, you know, looking at the number of shows, uh, how many of these shows are actually international in scope? And looking at the show, I know this is a lot of numbers and we're providing you all with, the, with this presentation, but what I just wanted to point out that a country like Germany and France, where they have a lot of exhibitions every year, um, the size is is double that of, of, of France and Germany. I mean, Germany, the size of, of their shows uh, are the combined size of France, Turkey, Italy, and Spain. So you can you can see that you can see that the shows in Germany globally tend to be the largest shows. But as a footnote. China is uh, creeping up there uh, on the list of the largest shows in the world. In terms of internationality, you can look at the, 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 the far right of, the, of, the, um, of this table, and you can see that that number of exhibitions that would be considered international, with Germany being at 71%, France at 32%, Turkey at 46%. So you can see, you can see that, that, that there's a large focus on international shows uh, in, in Germany because, because these shows tend to draw from both the exhibitor side and the visitor side um, a lot of international attendees. So, so, so we're, we're just trying to give you an idea of some scale here. Um, on, on the third slide, we, we, I wanted to just walk you through the venues just to let you know that, that, uh, that, that a lot of the largest shows in the United States take place in Las Vegas. And I know the Las Vegas Convention Center, which is shown in the, in the blinking light, is showing 184,000 uh, square meters. Um, obviously, together with the other venues like the Sands and the Mandalay Bay, you can have uh, net 200,000 square meter size shows, which, are, which is comparable to a show in Europe. But you need the venues, and, and the U.S., uh, the largest venue currently in the U.S. is McCormick Place, but that's still only eighth on the, on the list of the top 
show uh, venues around the world. Now, adding it, this chart is is only up to uh, 2014, and last year a new venue opened opened its doors in Shanghai, China, the new Shanghai International Exhibition Center, and it has a it has a gross capacity of 500,000 uh, square meters, which is five million square feet. So so the largest show possible now quite possibly could be could be held in in Shanghai over the next years. Dennis I'm looking looking at yeah Dennis, sure. Could I could yeah. I jump in Dennis that is fascinating. I have to say that that slide is extraordinary. It would be um can I then jump in and propose a poll which could kind of sit with this? Um I found that very, very interesting. Please um there is a poll um, that we'd like to launch now, and um, here we go, launching. Have you already exhibited an international trade show? Please, we'd like to have um, 100%, well, that's very simple, 100%, 13%, no, 13%, 20% no. So the yes numbers were very quick. So we seem to be settling out. I'm going to close that poll now. 65% um, yes. 21% uh, no and 14% say no, but they plan to in 2016. Thank you so much, Dennis. Back to you. This is fascinating. Okay. Well, well, well. Once again, uh, it just it just proves how many how many U.S. organizations have already taken taken the the time and the investment to look outside the U.S. Um, and, but it also shows that there's still a lot of potential. I think everyone here probably probably knows that, that it's just maybe 2% of U.S. companies are active in exporting. Um, and so we as a company look at this as a challenge to, to do what we can to work with the uh, U.S. government to try to try to help stimulate more interest in international markets. But moving on, you know, we're, we're always talking about square meters and square feet. So the first thing we like to make sure that all of our companies understand are, 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 the, are the scales. So if, if, you know, sometimes some of you may have applied for a show and you may be saying, okay, this is a new market for us, we'll just go in with a 10 by 10. Um, and then you, you, you get in contact with the organizer and they're, they're so happy on the phone to take an order of 10 by 10. Um, but then when you get your, your registration or your offer, it comes back as a 10 meter by 10 meter. And if you look at the next slide, <clears throat> you can see what a 10 meter by 10 meter booth looks like. And for a company that, that has a certain budget of going into a show, you, you might fall off your chair when you, when you see the price and you see the, uh, the size of the booth. So always be aware that outside the United States, pretty much every country is working on a, on a metric system. So a 10 by 10 foot or 100 square meter booth would be a 3 by 3. So just just want to get that get that out of there. Um, but 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 what this means is that is that when you when you are looking at a at a new market or a new show, we all we always like to to run through some some approach uh, principles that a company should be should be looking at when they're looking at a new market or a new region or a new show in a current market. So so we always believe in in, in understanding. What your what your goals are and and understanding what the potential audience would be and and what that requires that it requires extensive research. Well, one good thing is that most of the organizers have already done that research for you, as they as they know the markets very well, as they are trying to bring together the buyers and sellers. So, do your own research, but also ask the organizer a lot of questions. What, what what type of languages are spoken? What what type of people might I find at my booth? Always ask the questions before making a decision to invest. Also, uh, set set your goals according to your to your company's mission. Uh, we always like to 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 have companies look at look at an investment over a three year term. If the show doesn't take place every year then maybe two show cycles might be effective, which would bring it to a four-year term. But we always look at, at companies, or we always try to advise companies to budget for three shows, get, get in the show, find out what's there, uh, understand what op short-term opportunities you have with maybe finding 
a representative or a distributor, see how the business uh, operates, talk to other like-sized companies as yours, um, but, but that three-year approach is, is critical to making sure that, that, that you have done everything you can do to, to be positioned as, 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 as a success. Um, obviously, the only way that you can secure a good location in, in an international show is showing consistency to the organizer and also booking early when they do send you notifications to, to, to make your application. Um, obviously, marketing within your booth before the show is very important, but also we, we, we like to advise companies to, to, to really look at what other options are available through the organizer, through the venue for, for marketing, extra marketing uh, activities. Um, and, and the final one, everyone has, has been beat to death with this, but it's very, very important is Know what your digital strategy is in the, in the U.S. market. Know what your digital strategy is outside the New York, New York market because there are privacy laws. Uh, there are certain countries that, 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 that don't allow so, so certain social media platforms like China with Facebook. So everyone here may, may or may not have been introduced to WeChat in China, but if you're doing business in China or you're planning to go to China, I would go to the, I would go to the App Store and, and download WeChat. But ultimately, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to assist our customers and potential customers uh, in, in, in being equipped with the, with the correct, correct information uh, that, that enables them to make the right decisions and, and really look at their ROI. Um, the, 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 the next slide is just something very, very visual um, where, where, where you, can, you can see that apart from the booth, on, on most venues, inside and outside Europe, I mean, Dubai is a perfect example. They have really modeled their, their trade show industry on, 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 on European venues. So, so you can always find different ways to market and drive traffic to your, to your booth. Just a little anecdote. Uh, in 2014, we, we were talking to a company. I have permission to mention their name. Uh, Vitamix, uh, they, they had not been in Europe up until that point, um, and they, they were looking at one of our events, which is the largest consumer goods show, uh, Ambiente, and so they, they, they walked the show the, the, first, the first year that they were there, and we were, we were talking to them, and they were looking at what, what they needed to do to really make a big bang because they were so well known in the United States with a large uh, loyal, loyal customer base. So basically what they did is they, is they looked where, where their booth was and they looked at how they're going to drive traffic to their booth. Well, what they decided and, and what, what, what we as the organizer lobbied for them and what the venue agreed was they could set up small stations in the, in the corridors as, as traffic is, is moving from hall to hall or from the entrance to the halls. There were little Vitamix stations set up and they were mixing smoothies, they were handing out apples, and what they were doing, they were just, just giving the message of come to Vitamix, come see what this, what this, uh, what this health kick is, is all about and how you can live a, a healthy life through using their, their, their machine. So I want to say that, that, that they, again, they planned for three events, and uh, on their first event, we can say that they exceeded their, their goals over to three total events. So... This year will be the third event. We will be leaving for, for Germany on Friday. And so basically, we expect them to have another successful show at, at Ambiente. So, so it's, just, it's just one story about, about how a company uh, used, uh, worked, with, worked with the organizers and looked at everything uh, in detail before they actually pulled the trigger, so to say. This is Germany, but not, not everywhere is, uh, is the same. So, so I like to, in some presentations that I give in other, in other uh, areas, we, we, we like to use a graphic here where we show a sandbox um, and, a, and a leaf of an, or, or some part of an evergreen tree to show you that, that some, some countries are, are very um, normal, I would say. I mean, normal in, in the aspect that, that sometimes not everything is perfect and, and you have to 
you have to find your way through through the market. But then other other markets and other other countries are very organized and very straightforward. Um, and I and I think we were going to do a poll here, John. We certainly are. I'm absolutely have been waiting for this. I've been looking forward to this poll. Um, and uh, Dennis, thank you so much. Um, I love this sand pit uh, um, slide. So here we go. Here is the poll that's going to go with it. And this gives you all a chance to have some fun. Now, where do you think that country poll is? If you look at it, um, and say to yourself, uh, which country is it? Um, we, um, everybody at the moment, the majority is saying Germany, then followed by Japan and China. Um, nobody thinks it's Brazil. Nobody thinks it's the USA. <laughs> so um, I would like to say, actually, you're pretty well correct. Um, uh, when we were playing the guessing game a couple of days ago, pre preparing for this, um, uh, the answer is Germany. So well done for 48% of you who got Germany. Thank you. I'm closing this poll. Back to Dennis. Okay, and um, well, I, I, I think it's probably pretty easy to understand that this is this is Germany. Um, however, uh, I mean, Germany is ordered uh, is a very order-based uh, society culture. Um, the key the key thing here is is to note that that you have to uh, approach every country and market a little bit different, and you have to greet people to your booth uh, in different manners. Um, one thing that that's not on the slide, which which we could add to the notes, is is we 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 always have a have a book handy when we're when we're looking at new markets, and and I really suggest this book to to everyone here that travels that that goes to different countries. Um, it's just a great reference for you to read up a little bit about it, and the book's called Kiss, Bow, or Shake Hands, um, and and you can get it online. It's it it gives you really brief. Uh, ideas of, of, of style of governments on, on how to do business in a particular country um, and you can get it on, on Amazon and, and there's there's also a lot of different series that go into to much much more detail so so you can get kiss bow or shake hands in Latin America or China etc so um, th this is this is a great reference and I hope everyone has made a note to, to at least look look at that book because it really has helped helped me and my staff and, and we always suggest it to our to our customers. So 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 moving on uh, to to the next slide. Um, uh, you know everyone everyone calls us and says, hey, uh, you know where where can I go to 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 look for events to choose from, and and what sources are there available to me to help me uh, go through my 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 decision process? And so we we always try to we always try to help our customers by letting them know. That there are a lot of different sources out there for, for a potential exhibitor and for current exhibitors that are that are exhibiting overseas. And you can look at the, the government. Obviously, we have a great relationship with the International Trade Administration and directly with the USDOC. Obviously, the local embassies in the countries and the commercial sections in the countries are are very helpful. Um, there's an organization called CIDO in the United States. And these are the this is the governing body of all the exporting agencies that are in the U.S. and we're we're happy to we're happy to provide information on that organization which we are very uh, close to. Um, industry associations. I, I want to talk about industry associations on the trade show or exhibition side, and then industry associations that that that, that you all may be a part of. But primarily, if you go if you if you look at UFI, which is the international, let's say the umbrella of, 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 of all the associations, uh, they are a great organization. They're, they're based in France. They have a fantastic website full of information. A lot of my numbers from the presentation regarding the size of the industry comes directly from UFI. Uh, in the U.S., U.S.-based organization, which is also international, uh, with a lot of key uh, strategic partnerships around the world, the International Association of Exhibition and Events, and then as well one from Germany, but almost every country has their own organization. So ALMA is, is one organization representing the trade show industry in Germany. Um, when we look at trade industry press, uh, TSE represents the trade show executive magazine, and they, they, they do a lot of US-based uh, event information, but you can also get inter international 
information from them. The Exhibitor magazine is, is fantastic for people just like yourselves who are looking at exhibiting, not only in the U.S., but international. We, we also have a presentation there on exhibiting in shows in Germany, which that, that their Exhibitor's event is coming up uh, at the end of this month. Um, but, but Exhibitor is a great resource because it provides tips uh, about exhibiting at trade shows, and it also has an, an international aspect as well. And then also when you look at your, your trade-specific industry press that you keep, keep in contact, probably get too many magazines coming to your desk nowadays but, um, or digitally. Um, trade press typically cover the major events uh, around the world. So if you're in the food industry, you may be aware of the Anuga event in, 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 in Germany. Um, and and, and this, this is just the world's largest food, food show. Um, and so uh, the trade press typically will cover a major event like that. And then obviously with, with, with all the databases, uh, looking for information, uh, um, uh, export.gov is, is a part of the DOC, which I'll be talking about in a, in a few minutes. Obviously I've talked about the, 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 the UFI.org. Um, and then Expo Database and Events Eye. Are, are, are truly independent. They, they track all the events around the world. So if you're ever looking for a show or looking for a new market, you can go to either of these websites and, and get information on shows. Um, and then obviously when you're looking at, at, at marketing or agent PR agencies that may help you um, with ideas and, and with, with, with getting localized uh, support, uh, obviously we've been invited to this webinar so we thought it was only right to to put IBT down there as as as, an, as a source, um, and then and then obviously as I've been talking through the whole presentation is is Mesa Frankfurt, UBM, Reed, GL Events. These are the top four uh, trade show companies around the world. Even if it's not their show, they will always be 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 glad to help you as we would as well. If you're not in one of our key areas of, of focus, uh, we're always here to help because we. We love exhibitions and we want U.S. exporters to be successful. And by saying that, um, we, 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 we want U.S. exporters to look at what, what are your objectives in, in, organizing, in, in, in going outside the United States. Because many of you may or may not already have international accounts, international companies that you're working with. Maybe you're sourcing uh, raw materials from outside. But what, what we like to do is we like to go through a list of what, what are your objectives outside the United States. So is it to, 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 to really uh, touch, touch base with your, with your current customers or are you looking at, at developing new customers and new markets? Are you, are you concerned with, with, with maintaining the brand awareness in a different market or are you, are you looking at developing new sales channels? Um, sometimes going outside the U.S. And, and, and going into a market is either competitive positioning or repositioning. You may be losing some, some ground in a market, so you may be thinking, okay, well, our distributor participates to a show there, but I think that we need to go uh, directly as a, as a U.S. company and once again we'll wave, wave our flag. So these are all objectives. Networking is very important and obviously getting new global contacts from, from peers and, and colleagues that, that may help you understand markets better. At the end of the day, it's all about your company's strategy. So, so, so when you sit down and you're evaluating going into an international market and trade shows, um, you, need to, you need to align everything with, with your company's strategy. And when, when, you're, when you're discussing what your company's strategy is, a lot of companies have their own way of, of evaluating ROI. And so basically, one suggestion from our side that we've been using for several years uh, that's available for free online is, is on the next slide, and it's, it's from the German trade show industry called, called Alma. And basically, on their, on their website, alma.de, uh, you can go on and you can click on a tool which is called the Trade Fair Benefit Check. And what this is, is a, is, a, is a little tool that you can evaluate, is a trade show the right marketing approach for us or is uh, planning a meeting 
um, the right choice for us based upon our, our investment amount? Um, or is there some other marketing activity? Well, what this trade fair benefit check does is it lines up everything side by side and it gives you a calculation of the different costs and, and helps you see on paper um, which, which marketing activity would be the best one for your objectives and for your, for your uh, mission as a, as a company. And a lot of times we'll have uh, companies uh, looking at it and saying, oh, wow, yeah, the, the trade show is the most beneficial. It's going to provide me with the most impressions. It's going to provide me with the most return uh, or potential return than doing some other activities. So, so this is something that we find is great. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's in euros, but, but at the end of the day, you can take this, and if you're trying to evaluate doing something in, in India or China or Dubai or, or South America, you can still plug the numbers in. It's not just giving you numbers based upon German uh, economic costs or, or, or whatnot. So, so feel free to go in and, and, and look at that. Obviously, when we look stateside, um, we are going to stick with the U.S. government and, and, and recommend the, uh, the, the main website of the, of the U.S. DOC, which is export.gov. John, is there another poll here or not? Yeah, well, that absolutely is. Um, it's a great time to introduce our fourth poll. Um, and the fourth poll is going to be focused on this. In, in the U.S., um, absolutely, this is a great website. Um, in the United Kingdom, there are similar sites from UKTI and uh, in, in France and Germany from government organizations. But this one we've been on, and it is excellent. So we're going to launch our fourth and final poll. Uh, here it is. Now, um, have you already used this site? Um, do people know? Um, I'm getting 60%, 50% yes. Um, if you're not in the U.S., so do you use similar um, um, government support sites? So 44, 50% are saying yes frequently, 33% never. Well, do look around. There are some um, excellent government sites here to help you in your process related to trade fairs and international. I'm going to close that poll, and I thank you. Okay, well, uh, export.gov is out there for everyone, um, and, and the U.S. government uh, is out there to help as well because it's their mission, it's their duty to the, to the citizens and the, and the companies of, of the United States to help them find the right uh, path to, to exporting. So this is a great resource, and um, you know wh whether you're looking at your particular industry or whether you're looking at uh, what trade missions are out there that, that are, you would, would be available for you to, to attend. Um, this is a great site. Uh, th this site also leads you to some of the other smaller export councils uh, in, in your state or, or local and, and specifically for small businesses um, that can help you. If you're not exporting, they can help you become what, what the government refers to as export ready. Um, and then basically another feature of this site that, that we like to point out is the, is the search for trade events on the next slide. Um, and you can select the country, you can, collect, you, you can select the, the industry, you can select a time range. Um, but but what, what, what we want to point out by, by doing a search here on export.gov is every year the U.S. Department of Commerce certifies a certain number of events where it's like them giving the good housekeeping seal, seal, of, seal of approval. And many of our shows that, that we organize uh, through, and many of our shows that we do uh, U.S. pavilions on uh, receive the certification. And all this is just validating that this is a legitimate show, a very international in scope show, and it's a show that is the correct platform for U.S. companies to do business in. And the U.S. Commercial Service and the U.S. DOC uh, identifies once they once they certify a show, they put a, an industry team on that show that helps the U.S. companies that are either exhibitors or thinking of exhibiting. They help them uh, make sure that that they are um, you know uh, ready to to exhibit at the show, uh, and that's also pre-show and during the show where you will definitely have representatives from the from the local uh, post from the from the commercial service. Um, and, and they do at some, some, at some of the shows, they do organize matchmaking where they bring uh, 
potential buyers um, to, to your booth or arrange meetings in other locations. So look for the certified shows and, and look for U.S. pavilions because that is, that is really a great first step for a lot of companies. Um, I know that we're running up against time, so, so, the, so, so the slide here on the last slide is, is basically showing where else you can go to for, for support. And, and I, I want to say that you can go federal level, state level. Um, in, in 2013, I believe it was, or, or no, 2011, I'm sorry, the, the president it, it launched his, his uh, export initiative and they initiated a new program which is called the STEP program and what that is is they they were providing states the opportunity to receive subsidies to 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 basically either organize trade missions and or to help exhibitors uh, with with funding of their of their participation to international trade shows um, this program was initially set for three years it was so successful that they extended it there are still step funds available. Um, you need to check with your with your state. Um, contact us because we know which states have 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 step grants, um, and we can help you uh, get in contact with the people that you need to 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 research this. So so please don't 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 hesitate to to reach out. Obviously, on the federal level, there are grants. Uh, some of them not directly to the exporter uh, directly, but if you're if you're members of a of a trade association in the United States, um, you can contact them to find out if they are applying for any grants from the Small Business Administration, um, and and this this can just help you receive uh, some extra funding for the investment that you're already making. Uh, a great resource is is the U.S. Census Bureau and the Bureau of Economic Development. These are great sites that, that provide some more industry information and market information for you to, to, to do your um, uh, research before looking at a show. Um, the final website there is grants.gov. And this, this website, if let's say you've contacted your, your industry association and they're telling you, no, 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 there's, we don't have any grants. You can go on grants.gov and look, see if there are any specific grants to your industry, and then you can, together with other uh, members of the association, you can ask this from your from your trade show association to apply for for a grant. So, um, I think I think I think th those are all my slides. I just want to say it's been a pleasure providing you with some information. Uh, I know this is all condensed into a very uh, short time, um, but we're 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 based in Atlanta. We're we're here uh, in the states. We do cover certain industries, but at the same time, we, we're, we're, we're invested in your success as U.S. exporters. So um, I, think, I think that, uh, that, that you, you can feel free to, to contact us, and we'll try to at least help you. Um, and thank you for your attention. Dennis, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to just round up uh, the, the presentation now. Um, just a quick slide, and I'm, I'm, I'm wary of time. I want to leave a couple of minutes at least for some questions at the end. I know we're running over. So I'm just going to leave you with this slide, because after the show is also where you're going to recoup a lot of the return on your investment and, um, and making sure that you really follow up and personalize all of your, all of your leads and, and, and put the leads into your system and generate from, uh, from leads to prospects to closing sales. I'm just going to leave you with that slide. As I said, you will actually get the slide deck. You can read it through. Um, and in conclusion, I guess, from our side, if I wanted to leave you with one message from, from Messe Frankfurt and from IBT Partners, I guess how I could sum it up would be with these essentials. I think Messe Frankfurt and Dennis have really said and emphasized how much you need in the terms of the preparation. And the example, the case study he gave, uh, I think was very telling for that. It's about you know researching the right way to go about it, the right trade show, the right the right way to approach that trade show, setting goals that are achievable, probably monetized as well, engaging with the organizers like Messe Frankfurt and really helping and, and, and working towards uh, towards achieving your goals, and then from the very beginning having a very clear strategy, which is an online strategy for your marketing 
before the show, during the show, and after the show. And that's where we would come in. Because from our point of view, I think as you all see very much, for us, it's the localized websites, which are going to be your best marketing tool before, during, and after the show. Um, I want also to leave you just with some, uh, you know, some, and Dennis was very sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't blow the trumpet very much about Messe Frankfurt, but these are, after all, the iconic trade shows that we all know uh, from, from, you know, I, I, I'm looking at the attendee list of this webinar, I know that a lot of you are at Ambient, at, at Christmas World and Paper World, at Auto Mechanica, um, Hein Textile, Into Textile, uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of these 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 iconic names for trade shows, which uh, which you all uh, attend. So um, we're very very pleased to have Dennis uh, with us today and and Messe Frankfurt. And with that, I want to turn around now and say, are there any questions? We have any time left at all uh, for questions, John? Yes, indeed. Look, thank you so much. Um, totally understood. Um, um, there was a lot to cover, and um, I am very, very impressed. I thank you all very much. There's a lot of questions, so please don't hesitate. Continue to submit your questions. If we do not get around to answering your questions because um, uh, of time, um, do know that we will be following up afterwards. Um, that means uh, this week and next week with all of the questions that you may have. Um, and I've seen a lot of questions coming in. I will jump to the first one. Dennis, I think this is um, aimed at you. It's uh, um, about trade show organizers, and are you doing things differently in the wake of some of the growing security concerns? Yes, and, 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 and one thing that, that we always try to strive for is, is making sure that, that U.S. companies understand uh, the current situation. Are there any security threats? Um, what do they need to be uh, careful of, or, or should they... Should they um, you know, just just carry on business as usual. Um, there there is a real threat, uh, and nobody can deny, based upon the latest things that have happened last year, unfortunate things that have happened last year in Paris. Um, the, the the threat is not only a physical threat; it's also a digital threat. Um, and so, basically, what 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 Mesa Frankfurt is doing, and and I know that the the, the rest of of the trade show world is, is doing is taking precautions. One thing that we, we have implemented in Messe Frankfurt at our shows in Germany, we are now performing bag checks at the entrance to make sure nobody gets in with something uh, that may could that may may be uh, a cause of, of, of danger. Um, and as well we are really working on, on strengthening our, our digital security as we as we send information to our exhibitors, we are not sharing exhibitor lists with any outside organization. I think that's a key point because it's one thing as an organizer shares uh, exhibitor lists with 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 vendors to 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 help them try to get some business, but we we have tightened this up and and we are we are only sharing exhibitor lists with 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 companies on a on a on a need to know basis. So we're trying to keep our exhibitors secure as as well. Dennis, thank you for that. Um, I'm, I'm going to jump with three more questions. Um, and um, if I may just say sort of limit it to um, uh, a 30 second uh, response. Otherwise, um, um, I see time slipping away. Could Dennis, what about this one? Uh, since international trade shows are generally much bigger um, than U.S. trade shows, as you showed us um, so eloquently earlier, uh, do new U.S. companies have trouble navigating that process? I think I think the answer to that is is yes. And the reason I'm saying yes is is because the processes can be different from country to country. So if you're exhibiting a show in in China versus versus Germany. The processes are different, uh, based and also the size of the show. So the only thing I can say, and you can see on the screen right now, is uh, Julie Nickel, who's our international sales director, uh, email us and 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 have us walk you through the process. And and even if you're you're a, a veteran exhibitor at a trade show overseas, um, things change, processes change. So always get in contact with us first if you can. That was a great. And then as well, I'm sorry. As well, I'm sorry. There, there's, there's the best thing for new exhibitors is to research what U.S. pavilions are out there. Uh, we have a series of U.S. pavilions at many of our shows, not only in Germany but also in Dubai and China. 
and 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 just just look at those because those are that's some real hand holding and and we can we can help we can help the U.S. exhibitor that's traveling to a to a to a show for the first time. Dennis, thank you, and the pavilions, absolutely, um, they really uh, do work. Um, Susanna, here's a quick one for you. Um, if you had to choose just one way of getting information for social media trade fair, what would that be? Um, uh, that's a tough one. There's uh, there, are, well, there are so many different ways of doing it, but if I had just one thing, I think I would stick to videos. Um, videos are uh, an increasingly important part of your web strategy, your marketing strategy. They're really easy to take. Just turn your iPhone on its side, shoot a video, and uh, um, you know you can post it that evening on social media. Uh, it generates a lot of traffic. It's very good for your rankings, um, and for you know um, uh, you can even use it in different languages and things. It's it's probably the most effective way of communicating uh, in, in short, precise, concise ways today and, um, and an essential part of, your, of your, your trade show strategy. Yeah, I guess that makes total sense and you can use different languages and subtitles and all sorts of things to, to get that. There's, a, there's one here at a really big international trade show. Everyone speaks English. Well, there you go. So is it important for our social media to be translated? What's your view? <laughs> Uh, very good question. Um, I think let's tie that in for a second with the video question. Um, for example, if you're taking a video and it's in English, you can then put subtitles in other languages, and that's perfectly good. That was a very efficient way of using one video for for localized sites and your home site. Um, uh, again, which is a very cost-effective way of getting of getting good content for your for your websites. Um, in an ideal world, everything's translated. And everything is localized. Um, uh, you know, in the practical sense, you just basically try might make sure that you 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 really make sure that you are um, uh, uh, translating the essentials, the core uh, messages. Great. Look, thank you very much indeed. There are other questions. Do know we will get back to you. Um, all of these questions that are here on the screen, we will be looking at those and we will be responding. And we thank you very much indeed. So look, I'd like to thank everyone. This is the end of the webinar today. I hope that you enjoyed the webinar. I hope that you found it very useful. Um, a lot of practical information, a lot of um, tools there that can help you grow your exports and business internationally and leveraging trade fairs to help you. Um, a little closing factoid. I do like my little factoids at the end. Um, this one was, I was just looking up, where did trade fairs originate? Well, um, I think you might be interested to know that, guess what, it was France. Um, it came from their tradition of national exhibitions. And so that all started um, some, some 200 plus years ago. Um, the world's first expo was actually in London in 1851. Well, I think that we can all agree that trade shows have changed a little bit in the last 160 plus years, as, as Dennis has been showing us today. Um, um, I'd like to thank you again and remind you that this is also a webinar that is one in a series. Um, in two weeks' time, that is on the 24th of February, we will be conducting a webinar on how to sell online in Germany online in Germany, so do join us for that. Now please do know as well that there's going to be a survey, an eight question survey that's going to appear on your screen in just two minutes time when this webinar closes down. We would thank you to respond. Uh, it'll help us better understand your needs and your requirements and, and, and how to serve you better going forward. And do know that a recording of the slide deck will be with you on Friday um, after it's gone through a process of curation in our back office here in the UK. Um, so with that, with that uh, to close it, I'd like to thank Susanna one more time and Dennis. Thank you very much, both of you. A great job done. Bravo. Thank you for today's webinar. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dennis. And thank you to all the exporters. Bye-bye.